And hello again everyone and welcome back to Siberia. Now if you remember where we were last time, Kate Walker, New York attorney, has arrived in the town of Valladolid, France to oversee the acquisition of the Vorlberg Automaton factory. Unfortunately, Anna Vorlberg, the owner of the factory, has died. And so now she is on a quest to find Anna's brother Hans, who no one has seen in decades, but was last known to be somewhere in the mythical country of Siberia. That's not the thing on the eastern part of Russia. This is S-Y-B-E-R-I-A. That's why the name game is spelled that way. To do this, she has assembled the, or completed the assembly of the Automaton train engineer Oscar and is now on board the clockwork train heading somewhere else. And I'm going to go ahead and get that started because we got a cutscene coming up. Trains have to have schedules like planes and that sort of thing does. I mean, is this train the only thing that ever goes along this railroad, this particular track? Or are there other trains that are going to suddenly be going, hey, where did this thing come along and what is it doing in our way? Like, I really don't know how that works. So. We seem to be going a long ways. I mean, it's the next day now. And Kate, there's a perfectly good bedroom in the next car. Why did you spend the night sleeping in this chair? Oh look, we're somewhere else now. Some place with birds and bees, obviously. Now, those windows were all open a second ago. Did Kate close them, close the blinds, and then get up? Or... Okay, whatever. Oh, hello, Oscar. Where are we, Oscar? At the halls of residence of Barockstadt University. And do we really have to stop here? The situation is incompatible with the pursuit of our journey. What are you waiting for, then? Wind them up. Find a way. There must be some sort of train winding thing just laying around in this weirdo station. I have seen nothing that fits that description, Kate Walker. I guess we'd better find out, then. I do not like this station. The atmospheric humidity is detrimental to my sophisticated wheel workings. I will wait for you inside the train. <sighs> Wimp. Of course he is. Um, now my question here is that why does Kate think that Oscar, they're... see you later, alligator. In a while, Kate Walker. You don't get jokes, do you, Oscar? Um, why does Kate think there would be a train winding thingy just sitting around this station? I mean, does all the trains in her universe have clockwork mechanisms in them that they would do such a thing? Um, I don't know. I mean, still looks French. Let's see if there's anything over here we can do. <gasps> Kate! Should I call you Wimp now, Kate? Because you're afraid of some birds. Okay. We'll go the other way then, Kate, and save your sensibilities. Go over here. Just run and stop suddenly. That's got to help.
Let's see what's over this way. There's another one of those birds. Okay, it flies away. She's not afraid of it. It's a canal, I guess? I love how the train had just enough clock work power to just get to the right spot in this station. And are those mammoths over there? Huh, okay. I'm sure that's I'm sure that's completely unrelated to our quest. What do you think, huh? Place is kinda run down, it looks like. Is that abandoned or bombed out? What do you think? That thing looks like the winding machine I used in the Valadilen station. I've got to find a way of getting the train up here. Yeah, like I said, too bad the train couldn't have made it another 20 feet. The thing she's talking about is right here, by the way. Um, not this stuff up here. But, okay. So now we just have to figure out how to get the train up to here. And we had to go all the way up here just to let the game know that we... Yes, we know where this is. Thank you. Alright. So now let's go poke around and see if we can find someone to help us move the train. This game could really use a fast travel option. Kate Walker! Kate Walker! Come over here, please! I have something to say to you! Something that you couldn't have said, just standing there like you just were shouting. <sighs> I get really frustrated with Oscar sometimes. I think that's the point. Let's go see what Oscar wants. Yes, Oscar? What is it? A message has arrived for you. A message? You have been summoned to see the rectors. They are the highest authority at the university. They want to talk to you. Talk to me? Yes, to the person responsible for the train. So, I'm in charge now. Sure, okay. But why would these gentlemen want to see me at all? They do not say why, just that it's very important. Yeah, it's going to be one of those stops, isn't it? All right, I guess we'll go see what the rectors want, but we're going to look around a little bit more first. I'm sure all the birds flying around in this train station. Let's see right here. Um, meeny, meeny, miny, mo. Let's go this way. Yeah, this place is even worse than the Battle of the Land in just making you walk through scenes. And I guess they're pretty, but. Okay, a couple of things here. There's a guy we can talk to, and there's also something right here on the ground. That we can pick up. So I'm going to pick it up first. And that's not a question mark. We picked up a book. Hello. You arrived by train, I see. Yes, I've come from Valadilen. It's been a long time since I've seen a train here. Students, did you bring students with you? No, I traveled alone. Well, almost alone. I remember around the start of fall, trains would bring kids from all around the world here to study zoology and botany, paleontology, and all that stuff. This was a great university. And it isn't still great today, then? Uh, today? Well... Huh. Okay. The main thing we need to talk to is to be sure to You don't know where I might find equipment to wind up my train springs, do you? Well, not in this station, that's for sure. And I would know. You might want to try near the wall. So, you uh, think it will stay in for long, miss? Uh, no. I mean, I don't know, actually. One or two days tops. 
You see, I've got to wind my train back up so that I can continue my journey. It just... Uh, if you stay here too long, I might get in trouble. The train should stop, then leave again. That's the rule. Besides, your machine's disturbing the birds. Maybe you could take me up to this wall? If there were two of us, we could find what I need to wind up my train even quicker. Uh, miss, forgive me, I, I gotta stick by the rules. You know, I have to man the station. I don't want to get into trouble with my superiors at the university. Uh, you understand? Of course we do. Um, I wonder if he knows anything about Hans. The name Hans Varlberg doesn't mean anything to you by chance, does it? Oh, do you really think I'd remember one little name from the thousands that passed through this station? Well, actually I did, but... I'm sorry to junk up your station like this, but the spring mechanism on my train needs winding. A spring-operated locomotive? Uh, there's a thing. Yeah, and an impractical thing, too. Yeah, I always dreamed of taking the train, but now I'm over the hill. And someone has to take care of the birds, after all. Well, let's ask about those birds. All these birds in a station? It's amazing. This is no ordinary station, miss. Oh, no. These birds are part of the prestigious University of Baruchstadt Ornithological Collection. Over the years, this aviary has housed some of the most fantastic species from all over the world. And I am not exactly your typical station master either. This of the world is my responsibility, and that is no easy task. I can well believe you. And you know what's the hardest? The hardest thing is to keep interspecial harmony. And one day some explorer introduced a couple of cuckoos from the Amazon. Oh. It wasn't a good idea? A nightmare! You know, cuckoos lay their eggs in the nests of other species, right? Now what's more, they also push the host's eggs out of the nest so that they receive all the mother's attention, right? A cursed cuckoos. Nightmare! I see what you mean. That's one tricky bird. And there was nothing you could do to stop it? The faculty declared the bird a protected species. If it wasn't for our mechanical eagle, we were sitting on a major ornithological catastrophe. You have an automaton here? A wonder of technology. It's an eagle that's mounted on rails in the air. It passes through and it swoops down to collect parasite eggs. But heck, the dang eagle's been out of order for several years. Impossible to collect the eggs myself. Why not? I, uh, I can't climb up the gangway. I fell off it several months back and I still have a pain in my spine. Not to mention the vertigo I've been getting. I only, only have to look up in the air. Whoa. You poor soul. That must be very hard. The worst thing is, cuckoo eggs piling up in the nests. Soon the rectors are gonna notice. There's trouble in store. Big trouble. I'm worried. Yep. Worried. Well, that's some interesting things we just learned. I won't disturb you any longer, Mr. Station Master. Welcome to Barokstadt, Miss. Okay. The things here, first of all, they were talking about the Amazon cuckoo. Oh yeah, one thing to note here, you see this door in the background? Bet we'll get to go there at some point, what do you think? Um, the Amazon cuckoo, of course, is from the game Amazon, which was the first game produced by Bimwasakal, the same designer for Siberia here. There's a couple of mentions of the Amazon here in Siberia. You don't really need to have played Amazon to understand what's going on here, but there's a little connection to indicate that they're both taking place in the same universe. Which means, gee, Kate, you could have been flying in an aeroflot lot instead of riding a clockwork train. Now, okay. Uh, we're going to go over this way next. Um, oh yes, they also have a mechanical eagle here, which means, yep, Hans Verlberg must have been here at some point. Man, it's so quiet in here after out here after being in here with all the birds, isn't it? Oh, here's some people. I wonder if they can help us. Hey there! On the boat! Guten Tag, schöne Mademoiselle! My husband say, hello, young lady! You want to talk to us? Uh, yeah, kinda, um... Are you from Barakstadt? Yet. 
So you're like me. Birds just passing through. I'm stuck here because of my train. Kleine Puskereisen mit uns, no? What did he say? Train kaput. No luck for you. Yeah. I have a little problem with my train. It's kind of broken. I've absolutely got to get it out of the station. Do you think you could tow it over to the wall with your barge? Lock closed. Barge blocked. But if the locks were open, would it be okay to tow my train then? Por que no? More money for that stick. Da, it's possible. My husband say we help you if you give money. Right. And how much do you want? Chiquante. He want one hundred and fifty dollars. A hundred and fifty dollars? I don't have that much. No money, no bar. Let me offer you seventy-five. Nay, one twenty-five dollar. Out of the question. One hundred dollars and not a dime more. Correct. You have barge for one hundred dollar. Great. Now, don't move. I'll be back as quick as possible with the money. Okay. Seriously, Kate. You're a high-powered... I'll leave you to it. I won't disturb you again. Do svidania! You're a high-powered New York corporate attorney and a hundred dollars you don't have. Okay, I get it. You're in Europe. Maybe you're using euros or francs or Deutschmarks or whatever they're using in Bergstock here. But, oh, come on. Alright, uh, let's go talk to these rectors and see what they have to say. Yeah, definitely mammoths. No, that was a quick cutscene. Okay. There's a mechanical bandstand here, which, you know, is another automaton. There's saber tooths back here. Now, this guy, you can talk to him, but all he's going to do is hit on Kate. So, um, we're going to ignore him for a while. Okay, and more skeletons. Um, well, the station master back there did say that the state, this university, was devoted to paleontology, zoology, and biology. So I guess that makes sense. And if you notice, the mammoth she's standing on right here is pretty much the same drawing that Hans had made on the wall, the one she had to make the rubbing of to give to Momo. So it's beginning to look like Hans was definitely here and spent a lot of time here. This door we don't need to go through yet. We need to go through this door. <sighs> it's a weird little stop she always does whenever she comes to some steps. So let's go talk to the rectors. Good day to you, gentlemen. Tell me, young lady, to what do we owe this pleasure? Please do be brief. We do not have very much time on our hands. As rectors of this university, we have serious matters to attend to, and our time is precious. I have heard you wish to meet the owner of the train that is currently in your station. May I know the reason for your summons? We are surprised that your train has not yet left, miss. The situation is most regrettable. The rules do clearly state that trains are meant to come and go and not remain stationary at a platform. Trains should first stop, then subsequently leave. That is the rule. We agree then, dear colleagues, that what we're dealing with is deviant behavior. This matter really is cause for concern. It's a clockwork train, you see? So it needs winding up again? Unfortunately, there is no equipment in the station to do this. A clockwork train? That's strange. How very quaint. You mean it's some sort of mechanical toy? You are causing a hindrance to us, miss. I am very hopeful that I will find what I need along the wall. The wall? Uh, miss, that really is not a suitable place for you to go. 
especially for a young lady. You see, miss, we freely admit that every day we praise the existence of that particular edifice. We owe the integrity of our dear university and the fine education it provides to the wall. It protects us from harm and invasion from the unknown. May God protect us from what is beyond those ramparts, miss. Please believe me. I don't have any choice. I must continue my journey. Uh, such a decision is a correct one, since it's in line with regulations. Thus, your train will indeed be able to leave. And consequently, cease to obstruct our station. Okay, the wall. What are they afraid of? White walkers or something? Good grief. Are we playing Game of Thrones all of a sudden? Okay, well, we're going to talk about money. Well, let's talk about Hans first. Does the name Hans Vorlberg mean anything to you by chance? Ah, one of the brightest, most idealistic intellects to have graced our university. Hans Vorlberg. I remember speaking to him once. I was still a student at the time. He just stared at me, lost in thought for a while. He scarcely ever said a word. But how can one forget him? Idealistic? I'll grant you that, but bright? Oh, <laughs> don't go too far. He was completely incapable of passing any exams. All he ever did was to sit in on lessons, and not many of them, either. Paleontology, mainly. He had an unhealthy passion for mammoths, which matched the state of his intellect perfectly. That is to say, prehistoric. Prehistoric? How dare you? A little far-fetched, maybe. But he did have flashes of intellectual brilliance, comprehensible only to high-minded scholars who hold no score by appearances. My dear colleague, your hasty conclusions are somewhat cavalier. My assessment is wholly accurate. The boy was a little odd. You must concur if my father, who was rector of the university at the time, had not shown great indulgence towards him. Hans Vorlberg would have never attended this establishment. What about the bandstand, then? Is that the work of a deranged mind? Even after all these years, you are still jealous of it. My dear colleagues, I beseech you. Let's show some decorum. We have a visitor. What do you want with Hans Vorlberg, miss? Uh, are you a member of his family? No, no, not at all. I'm looking for him to clear up an inheritance matter. Is he still here? What? Here? At the university? <laughs> no, not at all. He left a long time ago. Yes, a very long time ago. The very year I was nominated to this position, in fact. Almost 50 years ago already. The poor soul moved on once he learned all he needed to know about mammoths. Ah, this establishment was never quite the same after his departure, it must be said. You mean to say it was never as bad? All that Oddball brought to this university was his misplaced fantasies! Gentlemen, gentlemen, let's try to retain the calm and level-headedness that befits our position. Uh, yeah, obviously they have mixed feelings on Hans, but 50 years is a pretty cold trail, um, Kate. But, um, yeah, I mean, come on, the, um, the bandstand and all this stuff is still working 50 years later? Good grief. Some sailors have agreed to tow the train, but I don't have enough money to pay them. I was wondering if you could help me out for a while. I could work for the money. Please wait, miss. We have certain confibulations to attend to. That is right. We must confibulate between ourselves. A collegiate decision must be taken. I hope that we are not indisposing you in any way. <clears throat> Why not? If it helps us get rid of that train. My word, that is a fine idea. What do you have in mind, gentlemen? Hmm. When you arrived here, you must have noticed a splendid bandstand which honors the main university courtyard. A unique piece of mechanical craftsmanship which no longer works, alas. Why, yes, we have very moving memories of its melodies. We're prepared to offer you a financial reward if you can set it working again. With pleasure. What do I have to do? Unfortunately, my dear, 
time and rust have taken their toll on this university, and our automatons no longer have a spring in their step. <laughs> you are going to have to be resourceful. To tell you the truth, there are a number of complex mechanisms here in Barakstadt, and it would appear that we have unfortunately lost their operating instructions. Your train, however, is an extremely ingenious invention, so you should be no stranger to complex mechanisms, should you? Uh, we are therefore counting on your ingenuity, miss. I hope that I can show myself worthy of your faith in me, gentlemen. Well, my dear colleagues, one more university matter nicely tied up. All right, so we have to... Here we are, busy chat-chatting, and look at the clock. It's tea time. Already? My word, doesn't time fly by? Thank you for a charming visit, miss. And thank you, gentlemen. Yes, look at us talking when there's science to do. Okay, yeah, um, I just have to ask, Kate, aren't you on an expense account? I mean, I'm, I'm just having trouble with the fact that this high-powered corporate lawyer, Kate Walker, can't afford a hundred bucks. But, okay. We need to do some poking around in the university here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this library. Okay. We're going to come back here later. Um, now, the first thing, there's a couple of... A lot of things we can look at, but not a lot of them do us any good. If we try to talk to any of these students, they'll complain about us disturbing them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here, where there's a book sitting on the edge of the death table. And stuff it under your jacket. Now, Alexander Valenbois, yes, he's the explorer from Amazon. So... Here's the Amazon Cuckoo, and it tells us basically what we already know about it. And, yeah, this it also tells us about the Forest Sauvignon Grape. Now, anyway, it mentions that Berkstock University has examples of the Forest Sauvignon Grape. We just need to know that this grape is here. All right. Now let's go upstairs. Hmm, this one light bulb is burned out. Alright. Oh, wrong way. Okay, I need you to come over here. Okay, you see this ladder here? We need to climb up this ladder. Because, of course, when you're wandering around a strange university and you see a ladder, the logical thing to do is climb the ladder. Okay. Row of books. One book is upside down. Wow. And this tells us about mushrooms. And the one thing it tells us about is the Yagala Cola plant. And it's from the Amazon, again. And the thing you need to know about it is it says that they dry it and grind it to a powder and the natives or the locals will drink it, basically consume the powder and it gives them better eyesight. It's better able to aim and hit targets behind thick undergrowth because it increases their vision extraordinarily. So we're going to need to know that. And I guess we're going to keep the book, because we don't put it back, but okay. The book is also by somebody named Pons. And here we are back at the entrance again. We could have done that in the other order, of course. So yes, we're at the university, and we've already stolen a bunch of their book, a couple of their books. So, hey. Kate's an adventure game protagonist, after all. Now, remember the Mr. Po the Professor Pons who wrote that book we just stole? This is him. Excuse me. Sir, please, just a moment. Yes, what is it? I'm not deaf, you know. 
I am sorry to disturb you in your work, sir, but... This young mammothus primigenius is barely 40,000 years old. Fantastic, wouldn't you say, miss? Uh, yes. Probably. What do you mean, probably? Uh, I don't know. You don't know? Well, you, you don't know, I see. What can I do for you, my dear child? All right. This is Professor Pons, and we're going to have to talk to him about... I've been trying to avoid a lot of non-necessary stuff, but we got to talk to him about everything. It so. wasn't really my intention to stop off here, but I'll confess, this university is really very impressive. Ah, uh, indeed. There's such a tradition of learning here, and so much knowledge, a real depth of culture, intelligence, and gray matter. I myself did my studies here and never left. Actually, I'm here because I've been summoned by the rectors of the university. Oh, I see. You must have made a mistake on your enrollment form. Uh, oh, no, no. I haven't come here to study. I have an important matter of inheritance to attend to. I have to find the heir. And you hope you will find him here? I'm not altogether sure. But you see, my train broke down coming into Barrackstadt Station. In that case, my dear, you must come to one of my lectures. Uh, here's a question for you. Do you know what the Proboscidean Order is? The probo Ah, uh, you see. There are gaps in your knowledge that need refreshing. Yeah, okay. To tell you the truth, I'm looking for Mr. Hans Varlberg. He's the sole heir of a very unusual factory. My company is in charge of negotiations for the takeover of this factory. Uh, at last word, he was living in Siberia. So, as soon as my train is ready, I'll be continuing my journey eastwards. Siberia. Ah, Siberia. But what was it you said again? Said what? You mentioned a name. The person you are looking for. Varlberg. Hans Varlberg. Do you know him? Hans Vorlberg. How could I forget him? Such an extraordinary fellow. So inventive. We shared a passion for mammoths, you know, and we bonded over this passion. Without it, I confess, I would have had little to do with an odd, ageless retard like Hans. At the time, we were both students. Well, sort of. Put it this way. Hans had special permission to attend paleontology lectures. You see, he didn't really have the necessary qualifications. In exchange, Hans did a few odd jobs around the university. Your Hans Varlberg sounds uncannily like the one I'm looking for. I'm not sure, my dear. Hans was above all questions of money and business. Just to imagine him running a factory, <laughs> perish the thought. Can you tell me a little bit more about him? He was always a mystery to me. He never said very much, and never quite seemed to grasp what you said to him. He expressed himself instead through his incredible mechanical contraptions. His inventions, I admit, have been much appreciated by the university. The few times we really did talk, it was about his strange interest for mammoths and a doll. Some sort of doll that obsessed him. A doll, you say? Yes. He kept talking about it. One day he described it to me. A sort of children's toy. A miniature mammoth mounted by a mount. It appears he found it in a cave not far from his home. The event all sounds very dramatic. His account was slightly confused, but it awoke a great interest in me. What do you mean? To my knowledge, there was only one tribe who made figurines featuring a mount, and that tribe is the Yukols. They live in the farthest reaches of Siberia, and for them, the dolls constituted a sacred object, illustrating one of their central legends, how such a doll made the journey from the frozen Siberian north to a cave in the French Alps is a mystery to me. Even today, it is beyond my comprehension. Have you considered that Hans Varlberg was maybe making it up? You said yourself he didn't seem to have all his mental facilities intact. No, that's impossible. Hans couldn't invent the story like that. The doll is a sacred part of the Siberia legend. He described it to me in exact detail. Siberia itself is a chimera that 
paleontologists of the world are very fond of pursuing. Um, Kate, you know that the doll exists. You have it. Why are you acting so skeptical here? Yeah. Okay. Um, we're going to ask a few more questions here. We're going to ask about this Sauvignon, because why not? We read about it in a book, so let's ask everyone about it. If I were to say Forest Sauvignon to you, what would you say? Oh, let's see. Sauvignon. Sauvignon? I would say it's some kind of tropical shrub, don't you think? We are talking about the same plant, then. It is a very rare shrub with small, juicy fruits. I found a book about the Amazon, and it says that there are even Sauvignon plants growing right here in Barakstadt. You wouldn't know where, would you? Mm, Amazon Sauvignon plants here? No. No, I don't think there are any. Highly implausible, but uh, you should ask the station master. He is keeper of the greenhouse at our university, so he could tell you more than me. Oh, thanks very much. Okay, beyond the fact that we are actually playing an adventure game, um, Kate, um, why the hell do you suddenly decide you're so interested in that thing? Oh well, this is all we can really talk, or we really need to talk I'll leave to. you in peace. I hope I haven't disturbed you too much. Sorry? No, 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 not at all, my dear child. All right, there's one interesting thing we can do here. Um, Professor Pons here indicated that he was really interested in seeing that mammoth doll. So let's see what would happen if we actually showed it to him. Oh, wait, a phone call. Hello? So, you got him then, this air? Ah, it's you, Mr. Marson. Good day, and, and how are you, sir? I'll feel a whole lot better when this whole business is over and the sales contract is signed. Where the hell are you? I'm in Bergstadt. What? What in God's name are you doing there? It's a magnificent university town. It would appear Hans Varlberg once passed by here several years ago. So if he isn't there anymore, then there's no point hanging around. I hear what you're saying, sir. But I have good reason to believe that Hans Varlberg is still alive. For the time being, I'm trying to gather extra information from people who have known him. What's your next destination? I'm not exactly sure, yet. Doesn't sound like you know too much, Kate. I just need a bit of time, Mr. Marson. Yeah, well, time is what you ain't got. Keep me posted. Ain't got? This guy is running a law firm? Okay. Yeah, uh, Kate, we know you're doing the best you can, but, um, you're an adventure game protagonist, so I guess these things happen. Alright. We need to do a couple of things here. Um, first thing I'm going to do, uh, Pons talked to, or Professor Pons talked to us about two things. He said something about really wanting to see that doll that um, Hans had. And he also mentioned that the station master would know about the Sauvignon grape, which Kate seems to be strangely fascinated with. So let's start by going talking to the station master. Which means we have to walk all the way over here again. I'm sorry to disturb you. What can I do for you, miss? Where might I find some forest Sauvignon plants, please? No place around here, that's for sure. I don't know what you're talking about. That stuff's from the Amazon. <laughs> you know, for someone who knows nothing about the plant, you seem pretty well informed about which mysterious faraway country it comes from. Oh, um, Amazon, Peru, Papua, New Guinea, it's all the same to me. Gotta go. Gotta work. Yeah, this guy's... Wait, coach. don't go! You know what? I don't think he was being totally straight with me. Yeah, think Kate 
is that that brilliant lawyer <laughs> logic coming into play? <laughs> okay. Um, let's go get the doll. Yeah, she knew he was lying to her. That's that's what makes you a great attorney, Kate. <laughs> okay, I'll quit making fun of her. All right. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back into the train. Hi, Oscar. I don't need to talk to you right now. We're just going to go and we're going to pick up the man. And let Kate stick it under her jacket. <sighs> okay. You know, I almost wish she had, would just pick the stuff up and it disappeared. As opposed to seeing her stuff, this stuff under the jacket, where it obviously isn't. And... Look, the station master again. Let's bother him some more. Excuse me, station master, but I need you again. Can't you see I am very, very busy? No. Uh, no. I, well, well, I am very busy indeed. But uh, okay, okay, I, I think I can give you a minute of my time. All right. I'm looking for a kind of little juicy berry. You don't know where I could find some? Look, lady, the station doesn't have any Sauvignon berries, not even for Sauvignon. Funny you should mention it. That's exactly what I was looking for. Forest Sauvignon. Uh, Sauvignon, raspberries, red currants, they're all the same to me. And we don't grow none of them here. But you see, I have just read a very interesting book, which says that the rare Sauvignon berry is actually cultivated here, in the famous Baruchstadt University Avery itself. Well, if it's in a book, then don't believe everything you're reading, Miss. I don't know why, but I don't think you're telling me the truth. What do you mean? I don't know. I mean, how should I know where to find your stupid grave? Go ask your professor, what's his name, Pond, the paleontologist. But you're the master of this station, so you should know better than anyone. Nobody tells me anything. I don't know. Go see the old guy with the fossils. Yeah, we're not getting anywhere with this, are we? I uh, won't disturb you any longer, Mr. Station Master. Welcome to Barrochstadt, Miss. And it's not really clear why Kate is so fascinated by these um, grapes all of a sudden, but she is, so I guess we have to do it. Head on back up. And go back inside again. I guess we'll go talk to Pond some more. Back inside, and let's go talk to Pons. Do excuse me, Professor. Professor, sorry to disturb you again. What is it you want to know, Miss? Well, since we are fascinated by the Sauvignon now, you wouldn't know where the forest Sauvignon plants are kept in Barakstadt, would you? Uh, why do you think there are Sauvignon plants here? I read about it in a book at the library. Uh, try going to see the station master. If such a shrub exists, he will have a better idea than anyone. It's actually he who sent me to you. I thought it a little strange, but he definitely said ask the paleontologist. You're the only one here, aren't you? 
Yes, yes indeed. What a strange way to behave. Well, I, um, I think he must have made a mistake, that's all. Nobody tells me anything here, and maybe you should ask the rectors. After all, they are in charge of the university. All right, thanks. Yeah, um, we're getting a runaround for some reason. Maybe that's what's got Kate's attorney senses running. Let's talk to him about our mission again. Please do excuse my persistence, Professor. But did Hans Varlberg ever talk about his childhood? About Valadilen and his sister, Anna? No, not that I recall. Pity. When I think of Hans, I'm always reminded of a mysterious mammoth doll he would talk about so often. A small effigy of a mammoth made of hide and mounted with its own miniature mount. Uh, how come he was so lucky? Why have I not seen this? Well, okay. Let's see if we can bribe you a little bit. I'll leave you in peace. I hope I haven't disturbed you too much. Sorry? No, 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 not at all, my dear child. All right. Fortunately, we have the mammoth toy doll. Do excuse me, Professor. Professor, sorry to disturb you again. Professor, I have brought you something that should be of interest to you. Look. What have you got there, then? Let's see. An effigy of a mammoth. But this is Hans doll, is it not? Yes, of course it is. How on earth did you... Oh, my God. It's in my hands. It exists. It really exists. Please, please do excuse me. I'm, I'm deeply, deeply moved. You see? Your Hans and my Varlberg heir are one and the same. This is incredible. After all these years, how can I ever thank you, my dear? Oh, I must waste no time. I'm off to my laboratory. I must study this carefully. May I borrow your treasure a moment? Uh, well, actually, uh... Don't worry, miss. I will take the greatest care of it. But I need to study it. You see, it has such importance to me that this very afternoon I shall deliver an impromptu lecture to my students about this very object. If you are interested in Hans Vorlberg, then it is essential that you attend. Hmm? Do you think so? Obviously. Give me your telephone number and I will call you the moment my lecture begins. I will return you your doll at the end. You have my word. Okay, they have cell phone reception here, but no ATMs for her to get the hundred dollars she needs. And she's actually in the same place. It just kind of switched angles in the view there without her moving. But anyway, um, I've been going at this for a while now, and I think this is a good place to take a break. So um, I'm going to stop here for now. Until then... I will. I am Dennis. I am Tanstop of the Paleo Gamer, and I will see you next time as we continue the search for Hans Vorlberg somewhere in Siberia. I will see you then. <laughs>